Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson I'm going to demonstrate how to look for, find, and then change numbers that are stored as text in the cells of an Excel workbook. What we want to do is we want to prevent a breakout of GIGO. GIGO is an acronym. It stands for Garbage In Will Deliver Garbage Out. We want to make sure that when we're working with an Excel spreadsheet and we're expecting to get a total by using the SUM function, that we really are getting the correct amount. We want to make sure that all of these values for sales are in fact sales numbers. Well, the first thing that I like to do whenever I inherit a worksheet from a client, from a colleague, whenever I download information from a mainframe computer, I want to verify the accuracy. So the way I do that is I use the count function and the count a function. The count a count function you're familiar with, and what it will do, it will count the number of cells in a range that contain numbers. Now, I have a sales report for the 31 days in January and I'm expecting the count function to return 31. Instead, it returns 27. And another way that I can verify that is using the count a function. Now, the count a function is similar to count, but what it's designed to do is count the number of cells in a range that are not empty. In other words, they could contain text or numbers as long as they're not empty. So this is what I was expecting for count. I only have 27 with count. So I'm missing four cells. I'm missing four days worth of sales. So you see how that can lead to GIGO? Now, how do I actually find those cells? Well, if we have a keen eye, we can come over here and look for the cells that have these little green triangles in the upper left corner. And when we click on a cell, when we click this drop down, we'll see that the problem is that the number is stored as a text. Now, that's easy, of course, to click and change it one at a time. Well, how did it get stored as text? For the purposes of this exercise, what I did is I used an apostrophe as the first character in the entry. When we put an apostrophe as the first character, we tell Excel, treat this as text. Now, rather than going through and spotting these one at a time, let me sh demonstrate several ways that we can quickly find the cells that contain text values. One way is to use the logical function is text equals is text and let's use control a so here what we want to do is we want to check whether a value in a cell is text if it is text it will return true if not it will return false so let's just point to one cell over there and you'll see that the answer here is false this is in fact a number now some people prefer doing it the other way they want to spot the cells that actually contain number so equals is number and again, we'll use the control A. So it's going to check whether a cell value is a number. And if so, it's going to return true. So it works the same way as is text. It's just looking for a number rather than a text value. So these should cancel each other out. It's not text. It is, in fact, a number. Of course, we can uh, you know, copy these down. And again, it's easy to spot where those cells are. But let me undo this, and I'll show you another way that we can quickly identify the cells that contain text. This time, I'm going to first make a selection of all the cells that contain the values that I want to apply conditional formatting to. So Home tab and the ribbon come over here into conditional formatting. What I want to do is I want to apply conditional formatting using a rule, a rule that uses a formula. So I want to use a formula to determine which cells to format. Now the key here is that it's only going to apply the special format where the answer to a formula is true. So if you recall over here, the is text is a logical formula, and I want to use that to spot those cells that contain text. In other words, where they're going to return the value uh, true. So equals is text left parentheses. Now with conditional formatting you first select the range that you want to apply conditional formatting to. So equals is text and I'll type in the first cell in this range, the cell B4 right parentheses. So that's my condition 
Now, when it answers true, let's apply a special format. So I'll just select this as a background for those cells and click OK, and there you go. Now I can quickly spot those four cells that contain text, or it should be a number, but it's a number that's stored as text, and then it's very easy to make those changes there. All right, now let me show you a very, very quick way to make those changes. Now, first, notice that the sales that I have over here return 136,954, and I copied this up as a constant value. You'll see what will happen when we change this. So one way to do this is to just select any cell that has nothing in it. In other words, a blank cell, and then copy that to the clipboard. So we're copying a cell that contains nothing. Now let's make our selection of those cells that we want to use paste special on. So the now selected come over here on the Home tab of the ribbon and choose Paste Special. And in the dialog box, what we're going to do is we're going to add what we've copied to the clipboard. In other words, nothing onto those cells. Click OK, and there you go. They're all removed. Now, let me restore that with Control Z. Some people prefer a, a similar but, but slightly different way to do that. Type the number 1 into a cell, copy it, once again go through and make the selection that you want to paste special to. This time I'm going to do the right mouse click and say paste special. Same dialog box but now what I want to do is I'm going to multiply what I just copied to the clipboard. In other words the number one. So I'm going to multiply each of these cells by the number one. Click OK and there you go. So whether you determine that it's better for you to just copy a blank cell, select the cells, pay special and say add or type a number one copy it, make your selection, pay special, multiply. It's your choice. So there you've seen how we can prevent an outbreak of GIGO. We want to make sure that the results that we're getting, that we don't leave out a significant amount of sales. So here's the correct total for the month of January. Here was that incorrect when we had four days worth of sales that we couldn't count because we had a number that was stored as text. And I'll see you in the next lesson.